All right, today we're going to talk about the felt hierarchy. As not so as that sounds, um, there is what they call a hierarchy, uh, what I call, in uh, felt felt qualities. So, in other words, um, you've got the low, you know, your serfs, your royalty, and you know, your um, your middle class, and this and that. Um, you start at the bottom with like wool wool felt that's uh, you know made in China or something like that you know then you, you work your way up Chinese uh, light felt imitation crushable light felt to, uh, you know maybe American made regular felt like regular wool felt and then American made uh, wool crushable light felt after that you've got fur felt um, you know fur felt with a suede finish Fur felt uh, with a velour finish, uh, fur felt with a uh, peluche, or peluche, or a silk silk beaver, kind of a shiny short hair beaver finish, uh, grand beaver, which is also called long hair beaver, uh, and a hundred percent you know pure beaver felt, and then you've got one uh, hundred X. Uh, you got to excuse me, I just woke up. Just rolled out of bed, brushed my teeth, had a little bit of coffee, and flipped on the guitar and the record button. So I'm still like wiping like eye snot out of my eyes and stuff. So maybe I'll edit that out. Probably not, knowing me. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is talk about the felt hierarchy. Um, I'm not going to get crazy, crazy in depth into it, but today we're going to try to do a bunch of videos and see if I could do a short video on this couple of short videos on some other subjects and just get some of the facts, some of the basic knowledge from uh, you know my brain into your brain. Um, that's going to be the idea of the next month is basically just getting all of my um, basic hat knowledge, everything I know from this vessel into the iPod out into the, the human uh, humankind. So it's everybody's to uh, to relish in and, uh, and enjoy, benefit from. So that's the idea. But, you know, as you know, in, uh, in life, there's always a price to pay for anything good. Uh, you eat a uh, ice cream sundae, you get, f you know, you get a fat ass. It's just the way it is. Um, you take your medicine, it tastes bad. So uh, the price of this uh, lesson, and uh, a lot of them, is you got to listen to my uh, caterwauling guitar. And uh, at least it's pretty, though, huh? Look at that. It's so Art Deco. Don't you love Art Deco? That beautiful time in our lives when everything was Art Deco, like the Empire State Building, you know? Oh, look at the binding on it. The color. The color of the bound body. Tummy cut here. Keep it from being sharp against the body. Smoothness. Look at the beauty of that. Roasted maple. They roast the maple, they inspect it, initial it, a locking tuner so that the notes don't slip, they lock into place. Six bolts on the neck instead of the usual four. I think some fenders even had three. Look at that. You could change the springs in the tremolo system and have different types of uh, tensions. It's a gorgeous floating tremolo here in Wilkinson three custom P90 units designed by the guitar's designer Joe Naylor just for uh, their guitars and stuff set up in a Stratocaster uh, cell, uh, configuration was I going to say cellament? wow that's a great word um, yeah the positions two and four it's hum cancelling so there's no, uh, no noise there <laughs> Is that 
key a little high for me. Ballroom gym is sitting Long and moonlight Soft, soft as women kissing Another moon So it takes a light Steals the stars from the sky Puts on Sinatra and he Puts on Sinatra and he starts to cry On and on And he keeps on trying And he smiles when he feels like crying On and on, on and on, on and on First time is the last time, and it makes you feel so bad. If you know it, you show it. Hold on tight, never say goodbye. So I'm on the shoulders and the Woman's lovely person of a man I don't care, I'll just dream and stay tame Toss up my heart and see you where it lands On and on, I just keep on trying And I'll smile when I feel like dying And I just sort of remembered that song today. It was like uh, it's one of those songs that, like, you know, you hear a zillion times when you're young, like, you know, if you're in your 50s, like me or whatever, you remember that song. It was like everywhere they played it. Stephen Bishop, you know, who's Stephen Bishop? Um, but, you know, he sounds so perfect in that song when he sings it. It's just like his voice is just so perfect for that song, you know? Unlike mine. Um, Back to the hats. Um, there is 
different types of felts, and it's very hard to describe them without showing uh, images uh, and stuff. But uh, think of a piece of velvet, okay? Plush velvet, you know, like, I don't know, crushed velvet, regular velvet. Think of it, it's very thick. And then think of a piece of felt, like good fur felt. It's generally not the same. It's like, it's plusher velvet. It's got longer hairs, kind of. Um, the shorter you cut it, the shorter you cut the velvet, the closer it turns to regular felt, if that makes any sense. And as the little hairs on the felt get longer and longer and longer, it starts to look more like velvet. The color gets more darker, more plush, more colorful. The texture gets more... You see it a lot on ladies' hats. If you go to a ladies' hat shop where there's like a designer making all these different ladies' you know, hats, you're going to see a lot of them have that velvety texture to them. Sometimes it'll have a velvety texture in the outside, but not the inside of the felt. So it's like one-sided velour, and then they have a double-sided velour body. Um, maybe my pink hat has a velour finish, I'm not sure. They have what they call millinery bodies. Millinery bodies are generally meant for ladies' hats. And it has this kind of softer, you see this? It doesn't have the same texture as a guy's hat. It looks a little more like a lady's hat, kind of softer and fuzzier. Okay, that's not velour, like a, a real velvety velour, but that's kind of a velour finish. We call this a suede, suede felt or a suede finish. It's kind of like the hat we have called the Cyrus. The Cyrus is like that. It's almost like if you have a regular fur felt hat and then you have another version that looks like black velvet or something, more velvety and the colors are more velvety and more sort of rich, the velvety felt will be called the suede. Okay, so think of it like this. Wool felt is always cheaper. It's always less expensive. So wool is gonna be at the bottom, okay? Below wool will be made in China wool. We're gonna say that, okay? Now, in the wool, there's two types. There's regular wool, and then there's light felt. Light felt is made a very specific way. It's many, many layers that are compressed together, and it's, it's very thick, flexible, soft, and rollable, crushable. You could put them in your pocket and do all that stuff, and it's fine. Um, examples of light felt would be on our catalog, um, in our website, excuse me, the, uh, the Atlantic, the Blues Fedora, the Stingy Blues, the Outback Hat, uh, the Bozeman, the Sturgis, these are all hats that are uh, made from light felt. It's wool, but it's a good wool. It, it rolls up, it takes rain pretty well, very good shape retention. Better than the light felt, American made light felt stuff, is going to be, I'm going to say light felt wool light felt that has a logo that's actually light felt from the light felt company you know there's ones we look inside the crown in here and you're going to see a big white light felt logo right on the felt um, there's no linings usually some companies put a lining but right on the inside of the crown i'll say like that's better light felt after that comes fur felt like your temples your, your whippets um, you know, all that stuff, your, uh, your Seville's, uh, your Ontario, all of the fur felt hats, they tend to be roughly twice the price of like a light felt or, you know, fur felt or a wool felt. Um, instead of like a hundred bucks, we're talking 200 for a good fur felt. Now, um, fur felt can be various qualities and thicknesses. It can perform very well. It can perform so-so. A lot of it has to do with the company not cutting corners, not uh, making the felt thin. So one way to keep prices down is to put cheaper leather sweatbands. Um, another way is to, um, you know, there's all different things they could do to cheapen up a hat, but those are things that are noticeable. If you notice that the leather is in, inside of a Stetson is, is vinyl, you could assume it's crap, you know, so they don't do that. Um, what companies do is they make the felt a little bit thinner. So instead of like, uh, let's just an arbitrary number, two, min two millimeters, they make it 1.4 millimeters. Nobody notices. If anything, the hat is more lightweight, uh, more shapeable. You could shape it by hand. It's, it's flexible, lighter weight. Um, nobody notices it's made out of the same stuff, but you just saved the company, you know, like a million dollars, which you really, really needed that year to get through. The, the next quarter or something. So um, this is a very popular way. I don't know what companies do it. Um, 
Some companies might, some don't. Uh, it might be something that happens every 10 years or 20 years or something, but um, it's one way of making felt a little bit cheaper. So thickness of felt will have a lot to do with the way a hat performs. Um, generally, if a hat is super duper duper quality, but it's so thin that a little bit of rain will just the weight of the rain itself makes the hat fail. You know, it's just it can't hold the flange um, when it's wet. You got to have a certain amount of thickness and stiffener on there. They don't over stiffen hats because it makes them feel like cardboard. It makes them feel cheap. So if anything, they under stiffen hats. Um, maybe they'll stiffen the crown. You know, give it snap. But um, they tend to keep hats luxurious and under stiffened because it feels better. Over stiffening a hat will sometimes make it perform better, but it makes it feel closer to cardboard and definitely cheaper. Um, sometimes what we recommend doing is just putting a little extra stiffener on the brim, and we do that with like some hats like the Seville and the Madrid and um, our custom hats. When we order them custom from totally custom brands, we say leave the crown really soft on the good hats and uh, you know, stiffen up the brim so that they got a good snap to it. Um, that's a nice policy, especially with Panamas and stuff. Panama hats, um, when they're very stiff up here, they tend to crack from grabbing it. When they're soft down here, they flop. So you want good snap in the brim, but you want softness on the top, flexibility. So it's always a good thing, stiffen the brim more. All right, tangent, I know, I know. All right. So we're going from uh, wool felt to light felt to fur felt. Fur felt has various qualities. Okay, after that, there's another thing called a suede finish or a suede finish. A perfect example of that would be our hat, the Cyrus. Cyrus has a velvety texture to it, which is not the same as the Seville or the Madrid or the Valencia or the natural or a temple, or a whippet, or a nash, all those have standard classical finishes on it. Um, I'll show you. All right. Here's a couple of traditional finishes. A temple, a black anello. Okay. This is an example of a fancy finish. It has a very slight hairiness to it. Let's see if I can turn this around to get a better light source for you. Okay, you can see there, right? It has a, a shine, a little almost like a mink, a hairiness to it. You can see it. Now a lot of these hats start off with the same texture, but there's a machine that combs it out, that pulls out the hairs to make them longer, like a grand beaver or a peluche. Now this is not a suede finish, this is beyond that. Um, this is a silk finish, which is actually hairy, you know, like a fur coat or something, but very, very short hair and it has a little shine, a silky, like a gloss to it, uh, especially when you steam it and you brush it counterclockwise a lot, you kind of polish it up, it gets the shine. Um, there was a thing where um, in the 70s a lot of people would take uh, baby oil and they would rub down their uh, their long hair beaver hats and they would get all the hairs going in one direction and they would put swirls in it kind of like a jerry curl and do all this cool stuff like with baby oil they would brush it you know and make these cool you know swirls and, and kind of control the long hair um, pollution or, or silk beaver is kind of uh, simulating that look. It's got the baby oil already in it, so it's a shine. It, it glistens in the sun. I think if you look, I do have a video about steaming a vintage beaver. If you put in Kevin from JJ Hat Center, steaming vintage beaver, you'll see a guy, a good friend of mine, well, a good customer friend, comes in with beavers and velours all the time. Uh, he came in with this uh, vintage, I think it was a really good Italian one, in gold. And when you do uh, silk finishes, it has that shine to it. If you do it in gold and silver, it almost looks like metal. It's like spun gold. There's like, you know, it glistens in the sunlight in this like metallic, shiny way. 
and the gold is incredible. You know, those, those are colors you see like in the '70s vintage ones. You know, like emerald green and like uh, you know mustard and like a real golden gold. And the, the shininess, the shininess is so shiny, and the softness it just feels like it's like a baby's bottom. It's so soft, and you brush it and brush it. So, but I'm skipping a few. Um, you can look at that video. It'll give you an idea of like a typical uh, '70s beaver or velour style too. Um, short brim, generally with a braid or a rope around it, kind of an Austrian style. Um, also Kojak. Kojak wore those. The 70s, it was very popular for, you know, guys to put uh, feathered bands, like feathered western bands, over that rope. Um, and they would have their beaver, their short hair beaver, or their short hair um, velour hats covered with, the, with feather bands. I still get a lot of guys in the 70s coming in, you know, it's, you know, it's still their style and they still have uh, beavers and velours from the 70s with the, the feather bands on them and stuff. It's kind of a... I don't know, maybe it's a New York thing. I, I don't think so. It's definitely an inner city kind of a thing. I think everybody's neighborhood wore different stuff, you know? All right, so we're going from the bottom, all right? Wool, all right? American-made wool, light felt wool, fur felt with a regular finish, fur felt with a suede finish. The next thing after that, like the Cyrus, remember? The next thing after that will be velour. A full velour is thick velvet. It's like, just like velvet, you know, it's almost like, you can't just touch the surface, it's so plush, it's like touching like a plush doll, you know, it's thick, plush, plush velvet. So it has a slight shine, not much of a shine, more of a velvetiness. Velvet makes the color come out more sort of intense. So think of a real velvet finish to your hat, that's just total velvet, like a hat made out of black velvet. That's what velour looks like. It's heavy weight. Where a suede felt is a regular weight hat, just like this, okay? When you go to full velour in a men's hat, it's heavyweight. It's a winter hat. Velours and beaver finishes, like uh, the McGill Untouchable, things like that. Anything with a long hair beaver, short hair beaver, or a men's you know, velour style are all going to be wintry, heavy styles. Um, they're thick, they're plush, they're way better with the, uh, the elements. It's good, good felt, generally a lot of beaver content and very, very um, plush and thick that um, the snow doesn't really get into it. It just sort of stays on the beads on the surface, you know, it doesn't get into those hairs. So those are like bulletproof. Those You could wear those uh, short hair, long hair beaver hats. Um, generally, the really good ones like uh, Biltmore's that are made in Canada. The new ones I haven't seen, but um, the American Biltmore Beavers and Velours, but they, they're Golden Pheasant, that Grand Beaver, and Peluche series from Biltmore were always great. Uh, those are, Velour was Golden Pheasant, Peluche was Silk Beaver, Grand Beaver was a Long Hair Beaver. That's what uh, you see in the linings of um, Canadian-made Biltmores, and I believe still American-made ones, the newer ones too. Um, Celentinos, Borsellinos, and Biltmores were three companies that made a lot of those beavers that you saw, and velours, in the 70s, the 80s, you know. So after that velour, the velour is thicker velvet. It's like a pure, pure velvet, you know, really thick, really plush. A lot of people think it's just too pimped out or a little too tacky for them. They feel, you know, it is a little playerish or a little bit, you know, 70s, a little bit overdone. Like when you see a blue velour, it's like wearing blue velvet. Where you see a blue felt hat or even a blue suede finish, it's more like a felt hat. It doesn't look like actual velvet. It's, it's more subtle. So real velour hats definitely have a kind of a player vibe to it and, uh, you know, a little bit hustler or pimped out. Um, you know, but that stuff was kind of in fashion in the 70s. It was part of the look, like Kojak wore it. And, you know, everything was a little bit overdone slightly back then. Um, what's considered tacky now, I don't think was considered tacky then. So, after velour, which is like a thick, thick velvet, it doesn't really have a shine to it. It's, it's like a matte finish, but super velvety. After that comes silk finish, which is like my, uh, this hat here. Silk finish is going to be a silk beaver, otherwise known as known as peluche or peluche, 
which is like, uh, I don't know how they pronounce it, but peluche, uh, peluche is uh, like a French for a stuffed animal, uh, like a teddy bear finish. Um, yeah, let me show you this. All right, um, like this. You see the finish in this, uh, this stuffed animal? That's almost like a velour because you see it doesn't have shine to it. But it's, is this hairy? Not really, it's more velvety, right? Okay, so that's gonna be, it's funny because stuffed animal peluche is more like velour. This is what velour is like. Um, velour is like a stuffed animal. It's very, very soft to the touch and velvety and the colors come out more, you know, like compare this to like a camel felt hat. Some people will feel that's just too tacky for them. It's too velvety, you know. Other people love it. Um, that's velour. Velour is going to be thicker, more wintry, great in the rain and snow. Okay, when you get to the peluche, the peluche, um, silk beaver, it actually is hairy. So you have hairs that are going one direction. You could take a, a brush and move them one way or the other, kind of like brushing a cat or something. The finish is um, not as thick and plush as the velour, okay? It's kind of more hairy. And maybe the plushness is the same. It can, it can vary from kind of thin like this to thick, but it has a shine, like a baby oil shine. And the shine goes away when it starts getting old and dusty. But you just have to keep brushing counterclockwise and just brush the hell out of it Con counterclockwise. Just keep going. A touch of steam will always help to just mist it and you know mist it down and then brush it counterclockwise. And then you'll get that really nice shine. Again, go to the video that I have. Um, it's called Steaming Vintage Beaver, Somebody's Vintage Beaver. And um, yeah, I forgot whose it is, but um, might not have mentioned his name in it. Steaming Vintage Beaver, and you're going to see a col like a gold velour or kind of a beaver with a rope around it right in the thumbnail. It's got a huge gold hat. That is peluche. That's that shiny silk beaver. There's only one category that goes really above that as far as finishes. It's called Grand Beaver or Long Hair Beaver, which is like from the Superfly movies and stuff, um, kind of a early 70s to mid 70s um, pimp kind of a look. Um, it was also very popular in the 1940s and the gangsters and stuff. They wore it, it looked, it just looked more custom, more, um, you know, like a, like a pimp mobile or something. It's like, you know, you've got the money to, to pimp out your hat. Um, it looks more custom and it's also more uh, wintry. So it's, it's, it's a wintry style. Um, again, look at, um, look at a piece of the action with uh, Star Trek. That was uh, a hat that Kirk wore, a perfect gangster hat, just a regular 1940s whippet type, type hat, but with a long hair hairy finish, long hair beaver finish. So it was around in the 40s too, and it was considered very, you know, like the expensive custom made kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's real deal kind of uh, custom, you know, it's like something you're not going to, not everybody can afford, you know, you need a lot of money to afford a, a beaver. But they've been around and they have long hair. You can actually brush it and style the hair and stuff. Generally, you want to go counterclockwise, counterclockwise, and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. You know, you could do trace it and then, like, get the, uh, you know, the swirls going up, you know, this way and then kind of swirl around and stuff, you know what I mean? You could get them going the right way, but guide it. Um, long hair beaver is, is definitely very, very good stuff generally. Um, Grand beaver from uh, Biltmore has always been fantastic. I haven't seen them in a few years, not since they went to the USA, the old um, Canadian ones. I owned a lot of them, at least four or five, and they were just magical bulletproof. The, uh, probably the thickest bodies of any dress hat you could think of. They're so thick, the actual felt. You could take the hat, roll it up into a cone, unroll it, and it'll have no effect on it, you know, with the sweatband lining and all. It's just super, super quality. Um, but again, I haven't used them in a while um, from Biltmore. 
Celentino makes them too. Um, we don't really carry them, but um, we do get a lot of shorter hair beaver and silk beaver things in because it's a little bit more, it's less of a 70s throwback and it's more just elegant and something you can wear, you know, it's kind of a European look, like a short hair silk beaver, like my uh, forest green hat. I think this, uh, it's a tad more modern and less uh, less of a statement than long hair and grand beaver. Um, so that will be kind of at the top of the, the Finnish hierarchy, you know, going from suede, you know, like standard suede, velour, peluche, to, uh, to grand beaver. Um, then you have 100% beaver hats, um, where the hats themselves are made out of beaver, like... Um, Metropolitan, the uh, the Shasta, the Tycoon, the Pinnacle. Um, those hats are made from beaver, and um, they could be various finishes. They could have a regular finish. They could have a suede finish, like our um, Tycoon and um, Metropolitan. Um, very short. It's almost a little bit velvety that just makes the hat seem softer and the colors just pop a little bit more. Um, suede, you know, they could have any finish you want, basically, probably not long hair beaver. But we, um, we generally do pretty, you know, typical classical looks. When we're doing a piece of 100% beaver, you don't want to get too wild with it. Um, you want it to be accessible and, and elegant, you know. So yeah, if we do anything, it's a, it's either a standard finish or you know a little bit of a suede finish to just uh, give it softness and stuff. Um, after that, pure beaver, you have what they call 100x. 100x beaver is different from just beaver. It doesn't mean 100% beaver. It's it's beyond that. Um, it comes from the belly. Um, the beaver fur is kind of like long, spiky brown fur. It's kind of like a oily, spiky kind of a fur, um, and, and it's long, but if you shear off the long brown kind of spiky, oily, shiny hair, if you shear that off, underneath there's kind of a taupe colored, uh, what they call sheared beaver. I could show you some right here. Hold on. Hold on. I've got it in my, my drawer. So yeah. The beaver's hair is long and spiky like this, okay? Now when you shear all that stuff off and you leave just what's underneath, like the, the, the lowest part, you get in there, it looks something like this. Okay, this is sheared beaver. So this is the bottom part of the beaver with the long hair is cut off. So maybe it went out to the, you know, like... They sheared all this top stuff off and this is what's underneath. Okay? It's the softest. You know, it's the stuff that's got the real, it just feels softer than like any velvet you could possibly think of. Now that stuff, when you get to the chest area, the underneath stuff, you get to this area, it's, it's like white. The beaver is just like uh, this prairie dog. It has a, uh, a white belly, silver belly. That's where that silver belly thing comes from. So this fur right here, if they shear off that stuff, um, first of all, he'll be very cold, but it's okay. He's got a variety of clothing he can wear, and uh, I even have a viewer that knits scarves for them. Um, but that white stuff is the best fur there is. It's like the, uh, the finest, the lightest color, and it's the softest. The, you know, everything about it is finer and softer and stuff. Um, so that's what they're making 100x out of. So when you see our hat called the natural, you notice it's this weird kind of color and it doesn't come in any other color. That's the color of that, the belly, it's down there. So um, in a silver belly hat, back in the old days when silver belly hats were actually, you know, 100x beaver, the idea is you use that taupe fur, which they also called clear beaver, clear, and we call it natural, clear beaver, and they would dust it with this white powder stuff. Like, uh, and it would wind up looking like a whitish, kind of winter white silver belly. So, um, these days, you know, it's not a 100x beaver silver belly, but it's the same color. 
hundred X felts, getting back to that now, is that taupe stuff, okay? That um, it can be dyed any color, okay? But it's that best, best fur. It's the softest, the finest. And in the case of our hat, the natural, we use it and we don't color it. We don't dye it. We use the clear beaver color, which is something that's a throwback from the old days. You'll see clear beaver hats from the 30s, 40s, 50s and stuff. Um, clear beaver is like the ultimate because you know what you're getting. You're getting the best cut of the beaver and um, you, you can see, you know what it is, you can feel it. You know, people knew what that stuff was back then. The natural is that feel. They add no stiffeners, they add no dyes, um, they add zero, nothing. So it's, um, it's naked in a sense and it's the color it was, you know, born to be. So 100X is something beyond, and it's expensive because, you know, these are little areas of the beaver. they got to use just that little area instead of using the, you know, the other 90% of it. They're using that little 10%, and it can get pretty expensive. Um, so the natural is 100X. Uh, the 100X cowboy hats, um, I don't know what they're made out of anymore. Um, but it's always perceived that when you get to 100x, it's 100% beaver. So anything above that can be something like beaver with chinchilla, where they add something else um, to make it more expensive. But the, the ultimate, the pinnacle, used, you know, the, the ultimate best used to be 100x. And then as they started selling, Stetson made better things, the 200, the 500X, the 1000X, just because, you know, they thought they should make it. And they started adding other things, chinchilla and, you know, uh, gold and silver, um, white gold, pink gold, uh, rubies and diamonds on the bands, and it came with like a plastic and uh, lucite and wooden case and stuff, and a certificate. And, um, there was a lot of things that it came with, a brush, a certificate, a big case and it also came in like a zebra, not a zebra, um, a crocodile skin, um, like a piece of furniture luggage that you could keep it in as a case. So you get your Stetson box, but you also get this like luggage thing, this like locker, you know, kind of like a Louis Vuitton like trunk, but it's it's covered in black like crocodile leather, you know, like embossed leather and you open it with a nice leather handle and inside is your hat nesting in this like velvet pit, you know. That's the way they used to look years ago, like 20 years ago. I remember the 100X like that. Nowadays, I, yeah, I don't know what you get. Probably a brush and a certificate or something. Uh, I don't think you get the glass case anymore. Um, but that's the top of the hierarchy. The bottom is going to be wool, wool felt that is not made in USA and is not crushable. Um, that stuff you gotta watch out for. Now if you get wool felt from like Dorfman Pacific or Scala, um, same company, they're a Chinese company that's kind of reliable. Um, they're like, you know, the biggest hat company in the world. They own a lot of other brands. I believe they own Bill Warren now too. Um, a Scala Dorfman Pacific is something we don't sell, but they're pretty good Chinese stuff. You may have a $35 wool felt from them that you got on vacation that's lasted you 20 years. Um, that's cool. You know, that's really good. Generally, a wool felt is not going to survive many rainstorms and stuff and seasons getting wet. If you're not using it in that fashion, it's fine. But what happens is you bring it from the rain into your hot apartment, you know, in January, February when the heat is pumping and it shrinks a little bit, you know, then you put it on, you stretch it out. So you wind up the hat is shrink, shrink, shrink after, you know, 20 years, this, those little half millimeters shrink and they add up and you wind up with a hat that's just kind of doesn't have enough felt to make the regular hat shape. So it's shrunk, 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 and you've stretched it out. So it kind of still fits, but you know, there's barely enough hat to just make like a cone on top of your head that kind of curls up at the end. You might have seen people wearing those weird cone things. Those are wool felt hats that they've just had for decades that have shrunken up, but they don't get tight like up here because you pull them and you stretch them too. 
so that you just wind up having less felt and less mass, and the hole inside is the same. So the, the brim just shrinks, 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 shrinks. So there's no brim left, and it's just like this little cone. Um, that's the thing. You don't get the longevity on wool felt. Um, wool felts can perform really, really well. Uh, like in some of the westerns, like the buffalo stuff, it's mostly wool, and they, they bill it as like buffalo and rabbit, but they do great. You know, they last and last because they're like, you know, thick, thick, thick. Like you can stack up a few quarters. That's how thick they are. Um, and there's stuff in there to repel the rain. It's meant to for to last, you know, it's technology and stuff. Um, but there's so much felt mass in there that it, you can't really shrink it the same way. Um, some wool felt works great, like those, or like a good light felt hat, like a Stetson crushable hat, a Sturgis, a Bozeman, or something like a light felt from, you know, USA, uh, like the Blues, Fedora, or the Atlantic. A crushable light felt is gonna roll up, you'll be able to put it in your pocket when you go out to eat and stuff. It'll be relatively safe when you wear it in the rain, not for decades, but you know, for a little while. As long as you know you flip the brim up, you keep it in shape when you come home, you know, you don't just like you know, throw it down. You have to make sure shape is correct, you put it upside down, brim is right, you know, away from heat, it'll be okay. It's just not gonna last you forever but it'll last you long enough. Um, fur felt hats, what happens is they can get knocked out of shape and all that stuff, but you can reshape them. They don't lose mass. They have the same exact amount of felt, you know, 10, 20, 50 years later, but they're just out of shape. So all you gotta do is just, you know, maybe give it a little stiffener and then mold it back into its shape and then you're fine. The hat can look like new. Sort of like when you bring your old, dusty, 10-year-old shoes to the shoe shine and you come home and they look brand new, like a brand new, it's like that. You're just a steam away from getting a brand new hat again. So fur felt hats can be like that. You just get so much longevity that no matter how much you dog it, you're just one steam away from like a really good crispy hat, depending on the quality, the thickness. Um, some felts are so thin that you can't steam and steam the hell out of them like that. You gotta steam them as little as possible. I feel that's a good rule with pretty much any hat. Steaming does take something out of them. Um, especially when you don't know what you're doing, it will take a, a brim like this that's straight and knock it out a little, make it wavy. Uh, much easier than you making that little ripple straight over here. Rather than you making that one out of shape thing fixed, fixing it, the rest of it will probably get knocked just because you gotta know what you're doing sometimes too. If you're fixing one area, the steam can bounce off that area and hit other areas and knock fresh areas out of shape. So the idea is, you know, you have to steam something first, something last. I generally do the brim last, because if you're steaming um, the crown and then you, you go to the brim, you're fine. But if you do the brim first, if you do the brim first and switch to the crown, what happens is it bounces off the crown, hits the brim again, and then the brim gets a little curly here and there, just from the steam bouncing off of it. So I always like to do the brim last. It's the most sensitive part and the part that, you know, generally goes out of shape. Structurally, it's not sound, you know. That's why we put, put it on the brim, on the crown, because the crown is a very structurally strong shape. Um, so, yeah, you have to steam one area, okay? And then make sure when you move to the next area that the steam isn't bouncing off of other things and affecting those other areas. You want to direct the steam kind of upward, you know, away from... So... Those are things that I think of subconsciously, but if you don't know it, you could, you know. Another thing, you never get steam on the inside because it's so easy to burn this band. Um, as soon as the steam touches it, it just, goes, it just burns it and disintegrates some bands into nothing. Um, if you have a band that's hard and turns into like rawhide, turns into like a, a rawhide dog bone, like it just, in one area, just shrunk and burnt, that's what it is somebody accidentally steamed the inside. Um, that can happen also from steaming here, 
really hard for a long time, it could permeate through and burn the band and shrink and destroy the band. Usually a band won't shrink and burn like that unless it's semi-dehydrated. So if you got a vintage hat or a hat you've been wearing for like five or ten years or whatever years, and the band is already a little dry, just one shot of steam, as soon as it touches it, just takes all the water out of it and it, it shrinks and turns into nothing. There's no way to condition it and fix it and get it back because it's gone. It's not just dry, it actually just shrinks into like a little, it rolls up, it kind of rolls and then turns really hard and brittle, just like a little dog bone, like a, a rawhide stick. That's what it's like. And there's just no way to rehydrate that, you know. It's impossible. Um, guys do it all the time to customers' hats, like people and, you know, teenagers who um, work in shops and try to steam hats, but they don't know what they're doing. Um, they do this thing, oh, steam the inside and sterilize the van for you, and then they burn it. And I see it all the time, and I'm like, eh. You, you burned your band, huh? Somebody was steaming the inside. Oh yeah, I brought it to this store and some kid did that. Um, yeah, it, I hear that all the time. So, never steam the inside, ever. Like, ever, ever. The only time you can do it is if there's no leather sweatband. If you have a ribbon band or a cloth band, then you're safe, then you're okay. You can actually do it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. 